Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Per Aspera. Uh, specifically, we're coming back to this, a couple of reasons. Um, new DLC just dropped called Home, and you can see here it's their fourth DLC, it's free. It's very much end game, right? So this serves as a shout out. We're not necessarily gonna really look at the details, but you can see, we've got dynamic water levels, desertification, if that, if that is even a term. Um, but it's more dealing with once you've sort of terraformed the planet, the big red, um, and then dealing with some new game plus after effects sort of stuff. Really cool. Cool to see they're still supporting it. Cool that it's there. Probably a hundred episodes from now before we even see any of it. So at the very least, there's a shout out for home. We've also got the Steam base building uh, festival. So I believe this is probably going cheap. Um, and, and I just love this game and any excuse to come back to it works for me. We only looked at it a few months back at the tail end of last year because it was a free weekend. Um, but I got 2023, any excuse to come back to have a, a fresh look in the new year. We're going to do the campaign. Um, now we've got simulation recommended for new Per Aspera players who are familiar with this genre. Recommended for players who are experienced with Per Aspera of this genre. Well, look, it's probably me, to be honest. And here we go, we can turn all this stuff on and off. Built-in, built-in, home, green, Mars, DLC. I mean, that says the DLC list. It doesn't say home is there. Oh, no, there it is. There it is, home. Good. I was worried for a sec. So let's play it on slightly realistic. What's this? Average amount of resources, average resource, average worker speed. Oh, what? Oh, and this is a bit more easier. Okay. And then what's this hardest one? Highly skilled per aspera. No, I'm not that sweaty. That's fine. So let's get into it. So what is Per Aspera? It's probably worth talking about that, but I just thought, I'd, you know, I'd put my credentials at the front. This is a general sort of overview video that can turn into a longer playthrough, more episodes, dive a bit deeper. You know, it's, it's a catch-all term. Uh, people uh, from uh, that are familiar with it understand the, the setup. Um, anyway, so Per Aspera is a, uh, a terraforming colony management game on Mars. I believe the devs actually went to a lot of effort to try and emulate uh, adjacent future tech in how it would be done, right? It's still a game, I get it, right? But it's not exactly fantastical sci-fi. It's a little bit more hard sci-fi, at least in their sort of trappings, right? There's a narrative um, where you are essentially an AI that is uh, tasked to govern and learn and grow with the colony. So you're sort of an AI facilitator. Though you've got, you know, support back at Houston, and you've also got the human, your human counterpart on the ground running the, well, you know, the, the meat sack side of administration. All right, it's, it's really cool. It's really interesting. One of the things that gets it, it mixed reviews a lot of the time is people not understanding how the automation system works in this. It is very rudimentary and, uh, you know, the, the closest example I can think of is sort of a binaries one and zero sort of system, right? And I'll try and explain it to you as we go. But it's not a sophisticated AI that governs logistic chain management. All right, let's talk to this bloke. Amy, this is ISA Mission Control calling from Earth. Are Aluminium mine is what I just built. That's all I can do. You do. Copy. I do. I do copy. Affirmative, Houston. I am with you. That is me. Great. The primary Mars module has already touched down at the designated landing zone. Good, good, good. Your turn to take control of the mission. Yes. Check the left edge of your display. You'll the, find your directives there. You mean this year? All right. Them to set up the initial base on Mars's surface. I'll give you some time to settle in. Thank you. When you're ready, go ahead and initiate our terraforming mission. So you can pull. You can pull the camera down. I believe. How do I do that? Oh, look at that. And have a bit of a squiz. But to be honest, you're going to be looking at the game from the top-down view the whole time. It's quite detailed, all the little things. I like that this sort of tracking UI element of the production renders it three-dimensionally. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, so essentially, this is our landing site, and that comes with one worker. You've got a bunch of overlays. If I recall, F1 is kind of the king overlay. Is it F1? Might be F2, F3, F4. I don't know. I think it's F1. Hmm, it doesn't really do anything yet. That's okay. Still early days. So let's set up a silicon mine. The view of Mars from up here is fascinating. The landscape is so cratered and desolate. Wait, this is my voice that I am hearing. It's me. I am talking to myself. Go. I must be verbalizing my thoughts as I process them. What an interesting function. I would like to test this some more. Sure. 
What other observations can I make about Mars? We could enslave all the humans here. Um, or, or rather, it's inspiring. This planet is so resilient. It inspires great things. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's your observation. Cool. Um, might be getting ahead of myself on the kill all humans front. Okay, so at the core of it, you have a worker AI and it's really basic bitch drone, okay? Drone goes, I'm going to pick up item, like for example here, I pick up red cube, I take red cube here. That's about it. They have an operational range and all they will ever do is dip their toe one uh, building of separation over their, their range. Now you can see it here. This is the range of our drone, right? And as we go further up and scale it up, and we can get thousands of drones. Like, it just gets ridiculous, right? But the thing is, the most he will ever do is say we had... A, you'll see it visualized better, but say you had a building here and had a road there, and that was governed by a different drone. And you will see they'll have their little territories. He will take a good, and he'll plop it over the boundary, and that's it. And that might be, maybe we've got an iron mine over here, and we need iron over there. He'll, he'll daisy chain it across the boundary, and then the next bloke will do it as well. And all they do it is they put it in a queue. They just put it in a queue. So if you overstrain your network, especially at the center, because a lot of things flow through your city, and your dudes in the center have a queue of like a hundred things to do, and your whole operation falls to fucking bits, and you can't figure out why, you know, job 99 is not being done, well, there's your answer, right? It's, it's a very linear, instantly uh, easy to understand system for logistic chain management. And because it's not doing a lot of the heavy lifting and outsourcing a lot of the AIs, if if thens and all that sort of crap that people are probably more used to in um, in worker AI, um, I think that's why a lot of people don't like this game. Or well, not a lot of people, but that's some of the backlash. All right, so what a glass kiln. Let's plonk it. Yeah, and you can see it auto generates roads. Now, I, I'm jury's still out on whether I want to make something hyper compact or stretch it out sprawling. Honestly, let's just go with compact for the moment. I think if you pull up the worker overlay, it's a little bit easier to see the zones where, where you can't build. Yeah. Let's do something like that, right? And then, how do I speed up? Like that. And then you can turn it right up, right? Because this obviously goes over a very long time scale. All right, cool. Build a solar farm, build a steel factory. So now we're getting into power. Power! You can see that that's the that's from our original thing that's generating. Uh, you can see that we have a range, and I think you could you could do something like this. You can go right out here, but obviously it's not connecting to any roads or intermediaries. So you can see there, still need a road. Again, let's just go with compact for the moment. Um, but you will need to use these to press out your power boundary. I'm sure that makes sense though. That'll do. Let's just plonk that there for the moment. We can always rebuild all this crap later. You gotta be careful you don't brick your game early, especially now that we're on a bit of a higher difficulty. Um, carbon mine. Oh yeah. Do that over there. Again, we're already starting to strain our worker a little bit. And what are we missing there? We're missing glass, but there's the glass kiln. So that's just waiting for a sand input. And you can see that's got the sand there. And and he's just smart. Okay, I'm going to go grab the sand and put it there. And then when that goes over, it'll go in the queue. So they are always smart enough. But it's not going to just handhold. A huge part of this is the logistic chain management of how your drones play. Now, what are you missing there? You're missing iron, right? Which is not something we have set up at the moment. So let's get an iron mine. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because we don't have like an intermediary. Um, what could we do here? A steel factory. See, that would require steel. And that would require iron. Neither of which... Oh, we've got steel. We've got steel. Let's put this in the middle. I mean, can we squeeze it up on this mountain? No. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. So he should build this building. And you got to be careful as well doing this. This can brick your colony if you chain a bunch of uncompleted buildings together and they can't build one in the middle. He, he can't transit out there because there is no road. This this highlight is just a, a blueprint. Um, I think I've, I've managed to brick a colony before in the past. Exactly because of that. Okay, cool. So now they're going to start running aluminium. 
and sand out there. And look, he's he's bringing it back from Central HQ. Now there are a few exceptions. You can see that there's a little little accelerator next to it, right? That. And what that will do, you, you have to actually be careful doing this. It will push it to the top of the queue, big priority. Um, but would if you have a huge sprawling network, and say the only sand you have is over here, I believe the bot will override and he will himself drive that sand all the way over here. So, okay, sure, you can rush the job and it's fairly reliable, but what happens when this dude drives five kilometers away from his post and all his jobs stop getting done there? So you can accidentally create a real problem by accelerating those jobs out of turn. So you try not to touch that button if you can help it. Okay, so that's gonna start generating iron. This is gonna need raw iron. Looks like he's gonna build this first, I guess. Well, it hasn't made any iron yet. There we go, it has now. So that'll get out to the carbon mine. Nice. And yeah, and meanwhile these all you we will get like a little visual indicator if um if this reaches capacity, which will be like five units or something like that. Alright. Glass kiln needs inputs. So he's just busy, 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 keeping himself busy. That's the electronics factory. We wanted to make the steel factory, which we can kind of do now. Look at that, we'll slap that right in the middle. A few more roads. Now you can also get an indication of traffic density and see how his, his little district changes because he's under a lot of strain. It's one little bloody worker doing all this work. Okay, cool. Worker factory is available. We will um, we'll just gloss over the reading for the moment, uh, usually when I do a first episode, because this could just be a once-off overview, and I'm okay with that, but if there is sort of popular uptake or interest, we'll do more episodes. Right? We'll do bloody two, we'll do 200, whatever people want, it, want. I'm happy to just sort of, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to shout out interesting games to people. Um, but if Great. we go a bit longer, now we'll, we'll get into the more. reading a bit more. This new factor, first episode's usually more gameplay-centric. Mars, but I can control it from here. So does that make it a part of me? The factory? Where does the machine end and my artificial consciousness begin? It's a good question. We're, we're laying on the heavy stuff. They are the same. They are completely separate. Bugger, we'll go with that. We are two separate entities. Yeah, sounds good to me. I order the buildings and workers to do whatever I decide to do. Yeah. But they are only tools yeah. that I use to execute the Mars mission, the vessels to receive my will down on the surface. Yeah. I am the mind that controls the parts. Fair enough. Yeah, sure. So, you know, it, it waxes philosophical about AI and how that, well, how they fit into society. All this is, it's, it's interesting, right? It doesn't seem, well, I haven't clocked the game, but at least in the early going, it doesn't seem like it's going to browbeat you with an ideological position or concept, because that's the danger with writing in current year. A lot of writers use it as a fucking vehicle for their personal set of beliefs, as opposed to posing an interesting question for the player to consume and, and mull over. Um, anyway, but I digress. We can make worker hubs, but they're not gonna be much good without workers. We can make a worker factory, but you can see it requires parts. So we're gonna need a part factory here. It's probably the smartest next step. Again, Scarlet's going compact this time for the moment, so let's just squeeze something in here. Right, and we, we don't really want to overtask the little fella. Oh, okay. Amy, this is Houston. Do you copy? I copy. copy. Reading you loud, loud and readable. Clear. Excellent. Sorry. I uh, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, right. I am Dr. Nathan Foster. I lead the team here at ISA that uh, that built you. Here, right, I bumbles. I'll spit it out. Get the mission underway. We put you in hibernation for the trip from Earth, so I'd like to check your basic functions to make sure it's all in order. You're gonna put Are a worker factory while this bloke bloody tells us his life story. State your primary directive. Oh, I, hang on, me bloody ha my AI hands are full. Um, c admit for forgetting, confirm directive. I'm a robot. I don't forget. Confirm directive. I can, Doctor Foster. My mission is to terraform Mars. Yes. This will enable humanity to become an interplanetary species. Big true. All right. Next, I'd like to check your decision-making processes. Right. You I'm may poor. have already noticed that there are resource <laughs> veins. We're not role playing as you, Scarlet. Jesus. Your initial base. So your workers may not have the battery capacity to reach some of them. Okay. How yep. would you solve this problem? Uh, 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 suggest building worker hubs. 
Place new building. More worker hubs. Always more workers. Building worker hubs between the resources and the base would solve the problem. Yes. Yes, yes, that's correct. Oh, thank Other daddy. Daddy, pat me on the head. As well, but they require more power and resources. So oh, here we go. Worker hubs are the most efficient way to do it. So now it's going to start. This mission's going to be Now we'll have a permanent income. I can't can select wrong. it. Oh, there you we can see that. To extend humanity's and then spit out ro robot drones. Previously achieved. But you are not just any AI system. You're well beyond that. S we made you hmm. an artificial consciousness. Until we... Have both can I pause you? Can you just shut up for a minute? Okay, so until we have a demand, it won't service this building. You can see down here, workers, one out of one. Ooh, zero power. That's not good either. So what we're going to do is work a hub, and we'll bring up this overlay as well, and let's just have a bit of a look. Now, hmm, what can we do? What can we do? I mean, what happens? I'm asking the questions. What happens if we just jam a bloody worker hub right next to this dude's worker hub? What sort of split do we get from that? Self awareness. It won't happen until and that is it's staffed. The last thing I would like to check today. Is We're okay? gonna need more power yes, as well. Foster. Very good. Then would you please state a positive and a negative aspect of yourself? No negatives found. <laughs> I am sorry, Doctor Foster. Running that question through my cognitive system. Did not oh, there we go, look at that. Worker hub be that. built, he'll start servicing your system requires more input and the worker factory at some point. That will come with time. Let's proceed with the mission. ISA has approved the first crewed flight to Mars. You'll need to expand the base to prepare. Yep. So get to work on that. All right. I'll check back in later to see how things are going. Oh, I see. Aye, go. Houston out. Fantastic. Finally, I can build additional workers now. Yes, true. I will appreciate the extra hands. Yeah, absolutely. But I wonder... Do I really need them? Uh, they will give the mission a boost. They will, they will give my functionality a boost. Yeah, they will. They will boost my functionality greatly. And make taking over all Having humans more easier. Will expand my physical domain over this planet. Yeah, that's the sort of rhetoric I want to hear. All right, let's just let this run because we're gonna we want to talk about the the worker systems because that is like I said I think that's the real anchor of this game. We bring dudes to colonize, we terraform, eh, whatever, but understanding drones is 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 king. All right. So this bloke's the on the loose. Worker has been made in the there worker he is. Factory. It is my first and there's his territory. Mars born. Mars born, first of many. My workers will The robot army the rises. The knowledge base says that workers need to recharge at their own worker hubs. Yes. And that they'll degrade over time from the harsh environment. Yeah, so it limits their range. I know they are only machines, but I feel a desire to care for them. <sighs> I do not like the idea of them dying. Why do we have to create a soy AI? They're just, they're, they're machines. Anyway, so you can see immediately a visualization of the strain. And you can see this bloke here taking the resources over the line and back and forth across the line. The moment he's just sort of centralizing a lot of stuff back to the hub because that's sort of the main, that's the only storage that we have. If you click on it, you can see what it's holding at the moment and you can get a load as well. Read out. Get a load read out on everything by the look of it. Oh no, it's just a worker thing. Yeah, okay, okay. So that's just a version of this visualization. So what could we do here? I mean, what we probably could do is let's build another worker hub and let's plonk it right in the middle of this terrain. Right in the middle of the red. You know what I mean? Let's watch him. Let's watch him work. So he's, he's, he's taking things across state lines and he's just bringing things back and forth from the seal factory. and It's cool. All right, so that's probably building now. Oh no, they built it, and now the robot, the worker factory will be producing over here. So it's, yeah, and, and the thing is you scale this up to hundreds of, <laughs> hundreds, thousands of these bloody little bots. So it's worth taking the time to look at it now to understand it, because later on it's not gonna make any sense. So everything's calmed down a little bit now because there's not really much demand. There's no real strain on my network at all. That will change. The worker factories will be. And there so we go. Helpful. Look at this obscure shape the that it's made. The workers will take care of the manual operations, while mm. I focus on developing the life support systems. Sure. True. Soon, I will welcome the first colonists. Yes. 
Their arrival has created so many expectations in my mind. Okay. There will be so many paths to take from here on. But there's something else as well. Some kind of feeling created from those expectations. Excitement to enslave all of those humans that are coming. Ex excitement. I believe this is... Don't anxiety. Excitement. Don't make a fucking AI with anxiety problems. Jesus. I am Got enough soft meat sack future. people that I fit into that category. I plan. Therefore, I feel fascinating. Yeah. Uh, good for you. Anyway, maintenance is the other major overlay that we need to factor in on top of, say, like, power, right? And it's, this is something that demands a, a constant income to create repair drones that will then fly around and police their little airspace. Yes. Oh, we don't have polymers, so we're going to need a polymer factory. Probably wouldn't hurt to put it out near here. And you can see that we need chemicals. So we'll put a chemical plant zone there. Very Sonic 2. Now, can we build that? We can. We, we have the juice to build that, so that's fine. You can also see these, these visualizations. That's particularly helpful there. See how it says additional mines needed? That's probably the most useful part of all this. I mean, you can open it all up and have a look at your supply demand and get into all that and if you sweat a little. But broadly speaking, it will just tell you if you're running at uh, an overstrained sort of deficit. You can see there, potential production versus potential demand is maybe something that you want to build toward. But you can also generate sort of waste. Say you have 20 aluminium mines working away. You probably, that'll take up a lot of bots just to keep grabbing the stuff to put in storage, right? It's a lot of busy work that isn't necessarily that helpful if it's not part of a greater supply chain or something like that. And you guys will just keep infinitely filling them up in storage. And you almost create, I've never thought about the term for it, but like a false bottleneck easement. You know, if you overstore resources, but then your your supply chain changes, your logistic change will change in some way, and you're not actually producing enough to support it. However, it's being sustained by your overstorage of goods. I'm sure people that are sweaty for these, because I'm pretty sweaty for these games. I love fucking logistics management and colony management and that. But perhaps you understand, like, if, if your aluminium mine runs out, but you have 10,000 aluminium stored or whatever, you're not going to notice it. You might not notice it for half an hour or an hour. And by overstoring it, you get potentially further into a bricked situation with by the time it runs out and you realize what has happened, it's too late to fix that demand. Yeah, I don't know what the term is for that. But I, that's why I worry. Like having a buffer and, and a little bit of an easement, having a little bit of overstorage is good, but you, you have to keep it fairly thin as well, I think, so you can identify the fault earlier than later. But that might just be an individual choice as well. Okay, anyway, so this needs polymers, and this is now making polymers there. All the strain looks pretty bloody bonzer to me. Build a maintenance facility. That's what that is. Okay, so we're just waiting for the polymers to get built. One of the earliest bits of strain that we're going to get, I think, is on electronics. Can't quite remember. Right, there you go. He's driving that up there. You can see all the traffic in here. You can upgrade the roads as you get technology, and that's driven by colonists. And you got to look after the colonists, keep them happy, that sort of thing. Here we go, maintenance facility going up. And that will send out little... Well, it has to build them first. You can see zero out of six. Ooh, we have a power problem. Um, that's okay. That's close to the edge of the radius, but... Let's just do that. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at these little solar farms. I love the art. I, I, I always love this sort of lower poly, it's more functional, you know, like if you have a look at, you can look at and you can physically see the storage options. It's not such a big deal in this game so much, 
But if you did want to go in and triage it and go, well, what's going on here? We've got a bunch of things stored here, maybe nothing there. Yeah, you could pull it apart and you could go, oh, it's, it's good. got a bit of steel sitting there. Something that does it really well is Surviving Mars. Surviving Mars might be the king of uh, visualization of, uh, what would you call it? Goods. Goods, that's probably it. Goods units. Um, all right, so that got built. We got power. Build an aerological scanner. So, so you can see there, eight electronic chips. Now, when you build this, it auto reveals a little bit of terrain there. Which I think has its value, so we could we could build it out on the edge of our known space. But for now, we might just put it in the center. Center-ish. If, if, God, good thing, oh, 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 I saw something flash, oh, there we go. Bang. And what this does is it just autopilot runs like a, a circle. It just starts going and scanning the closest bit of unscanned land. And then this is how you find all these resources. So they're all tapped, but you'd get a different symbol for them if they weren't. And, um, and then once you build this, that's pretty much the, the real core, the fundamentals covered. Of, uh, of what makes your sort of little bases tick. Obviously there's more tech and more stuff on top of it, but the scanner constantly sort of farming the environment to find new spots for you to tap. And you can see this, this infers a density of a certain material and that, that'd be iron. I think that is silicon there. Chemicals, you can zoom out, it even tells you, right? So there are patches of high density, but that doesn't mean you can't, you can find shit anywhere in the middle of the desert. So right now, that's our big bottleneck, is waiting for the electronics. Now that's complaining about maintenance. Technically, it's not inside of our maintenance coverage there. It's not a big deal for the moment, but, you know, food for thought when we place our next drone tower. You can see it's already got a bunch of the dudes loitering. Look at them, how cool do they look? Little bloody, look like little Star Wars aeroplanes. Nice. Well, that's good. We did. We managed to not brick us immediately. See, so we want more mines, but at the moment, that they just don't exist. We don't have them. That's why we need the scanner. The scanner's just sweating away now, trying to. Where where are we? Where is the factory? There it is there. So this thing is going to be running pretty much non-stop. So yeah, so all the little AI's operators, their own little, you know, I wouldn't quite say they're as sophisticated as, well, I was going to say like as ants. <laughs> but the thing is, they will take on a sort of ant-like hive-like property once you've got a hundred of them all working towards a task but they're only doing their only tiny little individual slice of the pie hey, you get Houston, how's it going over there do you Houston I am getting interference please repeat yeah mate, what are you doing Roger I asked how it's going over there do you do you need any assistance nah not at this time thank you the mission is proceeding on schedule. Yeah, shove on. The base will be ready to receive the first crewed mission soon. Hmm. Roger, Amy. Very good. Good. Stop clogging up the phone line. Um, okay, so now the scanner's up and running, and you can see it's doing exactly that. It's got a little timer, and then when that fills, it'll reveal that square, and it will move on to a close one. And then the the it's not explicitly explained, but the further it has to scan, the longer it seems to take. Right? Was that seven souls? Seven souls. I guess we skip these ones. Okay, sure. Bugger it. I didn't want to know what was in them anyway. Um, and you can see the game's revealed ice for our next thing because we're going to build uh, colonies, spaceports, that sort of thing. And ice is a big ingredient for the food factories. You, you colonists don't need a lot, but you still have to maintain the chain. And as soon as you start under supplying them, they get back on the rockets and go home. So, you know, there is a, a penalty and fail condition tied into that. Anyway, per Aspera. Really good, going kind of cheap, 
Four DLCs deep, it doesn't look like they're slowing down or anything like that. And it's free, so if you're a little bit funny about the way, oh, well, I don't know, not to name names, but Paradox DLC comes to mind, or just modern monetization in general, it's kind of nice to see something being added for free to the end game as well. So it's catering less to the new audience and more to the invested. It's good. I think they're doing a lot of things right. Um, and this, yeah, I, I really rate this game. So like I said, this stands as an overview video in 2023, just to shout out a cool game that's really near and dear to my heart. However, if you did enjoy this and you want to see some more, let me know. We can expand on it. We can go a bit deeper, do some more episodes or bugger it. We can clock it all together. It just depends on um, what people want to see. Anyway, might just leave it there for the time being and I'll catch you guys on the next one.